Hello and welcome to Step Through History. Now, I made this video for a trailer about the Pilgrimage of Grace and I'm not sure it's going to make the final cut, but I did rather like the chap. So I thought I could give him his own little video. Here he is, John Fisher, Bishop of Rochester and Reformation Rebel. I hope you enjoy. I want to introduce you to John Fisher, born the son of an eminent merchant in 1458 in the town of Beverley home to all the best rebels of this era. He gained a classical education before gaining degrees at Trinity College, Cambridge. He was held in high regard and it was even noted that he was a person who promised to attain to the highest dignities of his profession. John became the private chaplain to Henry VIII's mother. Together they established educational institutions and in 1501 he would become Chancellor of the University. In 1504, he was consecrated to the Bishopric of Rochester. At this point in time, he considered himself wedded. I'm guessing to either the church or his many jobs. He had also developed a marked contempt for wealth. Having been named as a trustee in Henry VII's will, John was popular and in royal favour, but things were about to change, though not immediately. As Luther commenced the reformation of the church, John and King Henry VIII were at first aligned. John opposed the progress of reformation from the pulpit and from the press. It has even been asserted that the book Declaration of the Seven Sacraments against Martin Luther, supposedly written by the king and earning himself the title of Defender of the Faith from the Pope, was actually written by John Fisher. When the king pushed through his divorce from Catherine of Aragon, John openly pronounced that the act as illegal and a tyrannical exercise of arbitrary power. He maintained the Pope's supremacy and opposed the suppression of the lesser monasteries with all his might. He attributed it all to a form design derived from heretical and Lutheran principles of robbing the church of a patrimony and overturning the national religion. John concluded with, If you can grant the king these smaller monasteries, you do but make him a handle, whereby at his own pleasure he may cut down all the cedars of your Lebanon. John knew there was no fooling him. He was now well and truly out of royal favour and gaining many enemies. A man named Rouse attempted to poison him. The plot was uncovered and the would-be assassin was boiled in Smithfield Market, London. Fisher opposed the act of making the king the supreme head of the church. This was the final straw, it seems. In April 1534, John Fisher was committed to the Tower of London for treason and other offences. At the age of 77, John was deprived of his income revenues, his bishopric and even his clothes were removed, leaving a dishevelled figure with nothing but filthy rags to cover him. Having been stripped of his title, losing the protections that brought with it, the Pope tried to throw him a lifeline by making him a cardinal. Whilst in the tower, Fisher was visited by a man named Richard Rich, who came with condolences and compassion. It was sadly a trap. Richard was the Solicitor General, and when he had heard enough from Fisher's lips to constitute as treason, John was swiftly brought to trial in June 1535. The reason for this is probably to deal with Fisher whilst he's in a weak position, as he is no longer a bishop and not yet a cardinal, he lacked the legal protections that would have granted him. Just over a year before the armed gathering on the Westwood, John Fisher was executed on Tower Hill and his head was placed on London Bridge. The story of John Fisher does provide an excellent example of the power struggle between the Catholics and the Protestants in England at the time. But those rebels mustering in Beverley are there for many reasons, as we're about to find out. Well thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed that. If you did please subscribe and hopefully soon I will have completed and uploaded my story on the Pilgrimage of Grace and the Monastic Orders of Medieval Yorkshire. Okay, until next time.